I have a feeling it's a girl. Maybe I'd like to have a daughter. A little girl who's not just a part of me, but who's been a part of me. A little girl who, if I look in her eyes, I'll know if she's happy or nervous or excited. And I'd want her to be honest. Yes, honest. More honest than I've ever been able to be with my Emma. I mean, maybe I could have told Emma about me and Omar, that I never stopped seeing him, even though they told me not to, and that for years I've been sneaking, sneaking off to Planned Parenthood on my own. Sometimes I'd have birth control pills, sometimes I'd run out, but Omar always promised he'd be careful, and he was, till the one time he wasn't. But if I was honest with the ma, maybe I wouldn't have to make this decision alone. Do I have this baby? Or do I close off this tiny door of life, leave Omar, and go off to college in the fall? Bianca, Ama snaps, pulling me out of the storm in my head. She frowns at me as we walk up to my tia's door, her usual disappointed stare. Why on earth does that dress fit you tight? We just bought it. It's true. The dress we bought just months ago already looks like it's about to rip around my bust. I groan at Ama. I'm already not looking forward to the party my family's throwing for my high school graduation. I'm not like Ama or Pa, who light up a room they walk, who light up a room with their dynamic personalities. I just want to be left alone in the corner with my cake. My cousins do most of talking for me anyway. Besides, I've had a dizzy, pukey feeling haunting me since yesterday. As if reading me, Pa cuts in. Ay, mi amor, déjala. Our Bianquita's beautiful, and it's her special day. Let's enjoy the party. But Ama has to have the last word. Viejo, please, we've been through this. I've told her to lay out the sodas. Pa smiles his buffer smile at me while I glare at Ama's back. I don't know why she's always bugging me about my weight. When has she ever been a size two? We let ourselves into my tia's house and crowd into the kitchen where tias and primas are snacking on chips, pouring, so pouring sodas, and greet everyone with kisses on the cheeks. Como estas? Felicidades. Here comes a graduate. My tias grab me by the chin. What a pretty face you have. Cara tan bonita. My tias can't just say I'm pretty because I'm chubby, so of course I'm the niece with the pretty face. Off to college, my tia Julia gushes. The first one in the family. What are you going to be, mija? A doctor or a lawyer? I don't know yet. I'm just a liberal studies major for now. Un libro qué? What does that mean? It means she doesn't know what the hell she's going to do yet, a ma butts in. It means she's got four years to waste our money while she figures out her life. Ten bucks she'll be back after graduation, waiting tables at Applebee's. Julia glances awkwardly between us. It doesn't matter what you do, mija. All of us will be at that graduation in Los Angeles, you hear? Thank you, tia. Why do I have to be the first one in the family to make everyone proud? At the last party, my tío Jose, who used to carve wood sculptures, said, I've always been good with my hands. It must run in the family, que no? Mija, you should be a surgeon. And my tía Martina said that, no, I should be a journalist because she once wrote an article for her school newspaper she thought was very good. I don't want everyone to count on me to be what they never became. I'm terrible under pressure and the queen of disappointment. I untangle myself from the knot of tias and younger primos playing cops and cholos shooting water guns at each other and go to my cousin's room. Inside, Melly's on her bed rolling a joint and Yesenia's breastfeeding Max. I try not to stare, but damn, it looks painful. Bianca, oh my God, you should wear dresses all the time. You look so pretty, Yesenia says. Truth is, Omar doesn't want me wearing dresses and makeup, giving other guys reason to check me out. In fact, the only time he's ever let me, let me make any major decision is now about the baby. Whatever you want to do, Bianca, he said, and turned very quiet. It was the first time I'd ever seen fear in his eyes. So, are you excited about college? I guess. Are you and Omar going to break up? Of course they're going to break up, Melly answers for me. You think that boy's going to wait around for her? I mean, no offense. None taken. I think of Omar, my silent and stoic Omar. Lord knows how someone as beautiful as him chose someone as ordinary as plain yogurt like me, except that I was the only double D virgin at school, and he knew I'd be loyal, which I've been for the last three years and still am. I never stopped loving him, and I never stopped being loyal. It's just, a mom made me fill out college applications, and when I actually got accepted some, to Cal State LA, the thought of leaving her sounded nice, and well, maybe a tiny part of me wanted to get out of here too. I mean, I love Omar, he's my first everything, but he never lets me do anything. I pass up every high school party to wait by the phone Friday night for his calls. 
I thought I'm missing much, but at least I, I could say I did something so I could say how bad it sucked. But no, be a good girl, Bianca. Everyone just wants me to be a good girl and follow rules. Omar's rules, Amaz's rules, everyone's but my own. Melly finishes a joint she's rolling and tucks it in her bra. I always go with her and take one tiny hit, enough to make me feel like I just did 10 jumping jacks, but not enough to make my eyes red and clothes stink. Come on, Bianca. I shake my head no, I'm okay. You sure you're all right, she says, looking closer at me. But she can't see me on the inside. My gurgling tummy, my swollen breasts, my head a mess over the decision I gotta make. I want so badly to tell my cousins. They've both been at my place before, but what if I have the abortion? Will they judge me the way I've judged them? How can Melly give up her own daughter? And why would Yesenia get herself pregnant just to keep her man? I judge my cousins all the time. But at the same time, I wouldn't be doing what they never did, have an abortion. If I do get one, what will they say about me? You sure you're cool? Melly tries again. Yeah, I try my best to smile. Amaz's been weird and smelling my hair lately. I spend the rest of the afternoon miserable as ever, barely able to eat because my stomach's so upset, while Yesenia shows me a hundred different photos on, of her phone of Max that pretty much all look the same. If I have the baby, will I lose myself and my baby too? Become one with my daughter and forget that I ever had a different dream once or that I had sadness like Yesenia? Or would I just turn bitter like a ma? Eventually it's time for cake. Everyone pushes me and Mauro in front of a big cake, our frosted names under the huge congrats, even though I'm not sure how I feel about sharing my day with a preschool graduate. For a second, all of us just stare at it. There aren't any candles since it's not a birthday. No singing, not a mañanitas moment. Felicidades, the older tío shout. Congratulations, the younger cousins boom. Then tío Jose raises his soda and says, to the future doctor, and the applause is contagious. All of a sudden, I catch a smell, a bad one. Next to me, Daniel's pouring hot sauce on his macaroni salad. I usually love tía Martina's salad, but today the eggs smell rotten, drenched in a creamy glob of mayo, and ugh, are those pickles? Congratulations, he shouts, showing me his half-chewed food. My head starts spinning, everyone's face is swirling together like tie-dye, and my stomach boils like a volcano about to erupt, and I suddenly have no control of my body, turning inside out. I push out of the crowd to the lawn as puke shoots up my belly, pulses in my throat, fills up my mouth and cheeks, but I can't, I can't let it out. Not here, not now. Everyone, my parents, my tias, my cousins, will ask me, are you drunk or pregnant? I bite my lips down tight together, and I swallow all of it back down. Que paso, someone gasps. She's choking. Quick, the doctor needs a doctor. <laughs> I turn around, everyone's eyes a blinking question. I see Ma and Pa's concerned faces, Yesenia and Melly with their raised eyebrows, my tia's all staring at me and the men drinking beer. Are you okay? The question echoes. And I smile, I laugh. Yeah, I accidentally swallowed my gum and almost choked. They buy it. Conversations start up again, and little squares of cake are cut and passed around. Just as I'm about to blend back in the crowd, I see Ma staring at me. It's not her usual look of disapproval. It's a look like she actually sees what's going on in my head. And I am so confused. I am so alone. I am so mad at Omar, who could only say, whatever you want to do, Bianca, it's your choice, that for just a second, I let the shattered look, I let her see the shattered look in my eyes of how terrified I am that my body is uncontrollably growing and growing and growing something else inside me. Melly hands me the piece of cake with my name on it, and I break my gaze from Mama and snap out of my spell back to reality. Maybe Mama and I had some type of connection once when I was still part of her, when she gave up her own dream, left the city and moved back home to have me. But that was a long time ago. And I've been nothing but a disappointment to her since. So no, she doesn't get my truth. And she doesn't get to tell me what to do now. This is my decision and I'm going to do what I choose. And right now, I'm going to eat my cake and get this disgusting taste of vomit out of my mouth. Thank you.